I welcome our father, the Bishop David Oyedepo. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Those who give honor don't lack honor. By your coming here tonight, your life will not lack honor. By your honoring the celebrant with your presence tonight, your life will not lack honor. People only lack what they keep. No one lacks what he gives. People only lack what they keep. No one lacks what he gives. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you and your household will never lack honor. Shame and reproach will never be mentioned with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you tonight for all the amazing things you have been doing in our midst since this event began. Receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the celebrant of today, his wife, the children, the grandchildren, the members of the family. Let your glory never depart. Let it be growing in grace in the name of Jesus. And again, I pray covering over the family. There shall be no evil report. There shall be sound health and vitality. The grace of God will be on the increase in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. And please, you may be seated. Tonight, I'll be sharing with us four secrets behind the triumph of this ministry. And because there are no private revelations in the kingdom, what I say to one, I say to all. Every child of God is on a mission. When you apply the same secrets, you get the same results. May the days of struggle of everyone here come to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the days of struggles for anyone here come to an end. We live in a kingdom that operates on keys. Jesus said to Peter, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. No one struggles with a door when he has a key to it. Your days of struggles must end tonight. The celebrant of today has never struggled for anything, yet good things kept happening. Your days of struggle must end today. Four vital secrets behind the sweatless triumphs of this ministry till date. One is the validity of the liberation mandate. It's not cooked up. 
It's not man-made. It's not organized. When you discover God's plan, you believe, you receive, and you pursue, God steps in to make it happen. I know my plans for you, says the Lord. The plan of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. My mentor Copeland said, Don't ask God to bless your plan. Seek for his plan. His plan is already blessed. May you never walk out, outside of God's plan in your life. May you not jump into a business because somebody else is doing it. May you stay on course with God's agenda for your life. He said, commit thy ways to the Lord, trust also in him, and he will bring it to pass. Lord, this is what I'm thinking. What are you saying? God's plan is superior to man's plan any day, any time. And the good news is God has a plan for you. Back in 1977, I read from Jeremiah 29, verse 11, Revised standard version. For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. The plans of good and not of evil a future and a hope and God said to me your future is in my plan not in your plan can I have you say with me God has a plan for me and my future is in his plan my future is in his plan the validity of the liberation mandate is one of the secrets behind the sweatless triumph of this commission why when God called he goes before the called to make the crooked path straight. When God calls, he goes with the call to see who will stand on his way. When God calls, he walks with the call to make the call happen. When God calls, he walks through the call to get the job done. And when God calls, and the call is come to his wit's end, God steps in to do the work. It is God who is at work in all both to will and to do of his good, good pleasure. And in 1 Thessalonians 5 24, the word said, Faith is that called the who also will do it. That's why when you step into what God calls you to do, you look like an amazement to the world. May you never lose color in your life. Number two secret. Now please understand this. We serve a God of secrets. The secret things belong to God, but things he revealed, a thing that belongs to us and to our children. And the fear, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. You won't miss your step. The color we are celebrating today is someone finding God's plan and purpose for his life. I'm pursuing it. You never miss your steps. The second secret that we engage with here is access and adherence to the ways of God as contained in scriptures. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You never stumble in life. As you keep engaging with the world in your life. It keeps guiding your steps and keep you going. That will be your experience. That will be your experience. That will be your experience. The ways of God include kingdom principles, instructions, corrections, warnings. For instance, I said to God, when he called me to go into full-time ministry, who pays me? And then his word came alive within two weeks. After I disappointed 70 others also. And he said, go your way, carry no personal script, and greet no man on the way. The laborer is worthy of his hire. And the Lord said to me, you are 
in my employment. I am responsible. Just stay on duty. Sir, that is the source of my package till date. God is a faithful God. His ways are everlasting. You are in prayers. And then the Lord said to me, my son, you have two eyes. I said, yes. Can you make one to look up and one to look down? I tell you, it didn't work. Anytime you are looking onto man, never claim to be looking onto me. But they looked onto him and they were lighted and they were no more ashamed. Can I tell you what? I've never branched in anybody's house in my life. Can you help? Whatever God cannot do, let it remain undone. Whatever God cannot give me, may I never have it. Whatever God cannot take me to, may I never get there. The ways of God are everlasting. You discover it, you believe and receive it and walk in it. He begins to show himself in your life. There are many things you have found in your studies, but how much of it are you walking in? There are many notes you have taken in church services. How much of this are you walking in? You can't keep your touch light in a box and not stumble in darkness. You bring it out to show you the way to go. We serve a faithful God. We serve a faithful God. Like one of the remarks here, don't seek to be known. You're wasting your energy. Seek to know, the Lord told me, and the world will soon start to seek to know you. Don't, I'm there. Where are you? I'm speaking now to the life of the celebrant today. Don't seek to be important. Seek to be relevant. Set to with all passion and doing whatever God tells you to do. Now he said to me one day, don't raise money, raise men. And you have more money than we ever need for ministry. Isn't this, these are all the ways of God. Serving God for money will make you to mourn. But serving God for your love for him keeps you going in supernatural abundance. You never suffer dryness. Watch, as things get tougher and rougher around the world, you shall be gloriously exempted. Yeah. Number three secret we have been privileged to have and work with is access and compliance to the dictates of the spirit. Some people think only pastors need this, only ministers need this. Everybody needs it. I know my sheep and they know my voice. May you return home tonight with an air-opening miracle. That you'll be able to hear from God on issues of your life. So you don't misinvest your energy, misinvest your resources. Access and compliance to the dictates of the Spirit. We've heard that severally. What are you saying, Lord? Are we going to Kaduna or staying back in the lorry? Take your Bible, and I did. Arise, get unto Damascus. Straight. The Holy Spirit has a way of speaking to us at every crossroad in our life. You never miss your step. Some have done the preference to other nations, and they are full of regrets because they are not sent there. So they don't have a back in there. Others are sent there. The doors open on their own accord. You won't miss your step. Remember, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. You see wonders happening in Covenant University today. Awesome God. Lord, if it is not you, tell me, and I will tell the certificate now. He said, it is I. 
dictate of the spirit. After we ran around the place, danced and all that, he said, hand it over to me now. I said, how? Lay down here before me. All the pioneer students were there, their parents were there, elders of the church. I removed my coat and lay down. He took it off from there. We don't have a feeling we are running a school. May your ears be open to the voice of the Spirit. May your ears be open to the voice of the Spirit. May your ears be open to the voice of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'll be sharing briefly tonight on understanding the potency of blessings. The potency of blessings. No skill, no effort, no expertise will ever match the value of blessings proclaimed. When God blesses, no man can cross. So coming under God's blessings makes you a cross-free man. Number 23, verse 8. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? And how shall I defy whom God has not defied? Verse 20. I've received the commandment to bless, and he has blessed. I cannot reverse it. Sir, no anointing can reverse a blessing from the Lord. Just get to a point where you receive his blessing. You can't have God's blessings and be caused by any devil. I therefore decree tonight that every blessing of God on your life shall not be reversed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every blessing of God on your life shall not be reversed. In Jesus' name. Apart from his blessings directly, God has also positioned channels of blessings for our lives. We have the blessings of parents. And I want young people to hear me properly today. Honor their father and their mother that you may prolong your days on the earth. Exodus 20. And verse 12. The Bible calls the first commandment of the law. Honor thy parents in the Lord, that may be well with you and prolong your days upon the earth. There are blessings of parents. And they set us free from the struggles of life. Seek to receive the blessings of your parents it will make the journey colorful for you then we have the blessings of patriarchs or spiritual fathers we had the man called Jacob blessing his children and he said concerning Joseph in Genesis 20, 20, 49 verse 26 the blessings of thy father has prevailed above the blessings of their progenitors. Patriarchal blessing causes men to prevail. Blessings of spiritual fathers cause men to prevail in the race of life where others travail. By the blessings of tonight, my son here will keep prevailing in life where others travail. We 
We also have the proclaimed blessings of prophets. I am the Lord that confirmed the words of my servant and performs the counsel of my messengers. Prophets are God's mouthpiece. They are God's messengers. When they proclaim blessings, God said, I'm committed to confirm it. Prophets are God's workmen. They carry the words of blessings to the people to whom they are sent. There were many, many lepers in Israel, or many widows in Israel, until none was Elijah sent, but unto the woman of Zarephath. There were many lepers. Unto none was Elijah sent, but unto Naaman the Syrian. So God sends prophets away and they carry the words of blessings in their mouth. He that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet, he shall receive a prophet's reward. But now we have a generation that have zero value for blessings. It's a continuous struggle for survival. But not you. However, a spiritual disconnect from the Lord stops his blessings from flowing. We saw a man so endowed by God by name Solomon. God appeared to him twice and warned him on certain issues, but he refused. And God became angry with him and sent adversaries against him. 1 Kings 11 and 10. May no one here ever disconnect from God. May you never disconnect from God. God said to Eli, although I've said you and your father's house will minister before me all the days of your life, but now far be it from me. He that honors me, I will honor. He that despises me, I will lightly esteem. First Samuel 2.30 Malachi 1.6 A son honored his father and a servant his master. If I be your father, God was speaking, where is my honor? If I be your master, where is my fear? So it takes sustainable honor of God in our heart to keep the blessings flowing. God says no to something, let it be no. He says yes, let it be yes. Don't try to explain. The Lord said to me one time, don't attempt to put words into my mouth. I'm the one to put words into your mouth. He told Balaam, don't go. Balaam went ahead. He still asked, can I go? He said, go ahead. May we be sensitive at all times to maintain the honor of God in our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. So also is a spiritual disconnect from patriarchs. Stop the flow of blessings they proclaim. The moment a branch is disconnected from a tree, it's dead. It's only a matter of time. Grace to sustain our spiritual connectivity to the channels of blessings that God has connected us to. May you receive it today. Yeah. There are things that I could labor for. You just enter into labor of others. You are not struggling. You are not struggling. You are not struggling. I have the blessings of prophets sent my way, manifesting in various aspects of my life and ministry till date. May every blessing you are receiving from here and in your life 
be sustained for life. Yeah. One of them said to me, these hands shall never know dryness. 1987, I have not known dryness. And I'm saying to you tonight, for all of us who are gathered here, your dry season is over. Your dry season is over. Your dry season is over. One said to me, I release to you the gift of on time. Before the need arise, the supplies will be waiting. You never bog your head on what to eat next. You never beg for bread in your family. You never withdraw children from school. I proclaim tonight as one of God's prophets that your days of struggles are over. One of them said to me, you will end up doing 20 times more than where I stop. You can't kind of, kind of blessing. You can't buy that with money. You can't buy that with money. May every blessing proclaimed on you tonight keep answering in your life. One of them will always say, you have not seen anything yet. And when that is said, I see something else. I see something else. Now, like you heard tonight, your path will keep shining more and more. Because the best is not today. The best is tomorrow. The best is in view. The best is in quest. The best is in future. No matter where you are today, better days, greater days lie ahead of you. I said humorously, if you call it best today, what will it be tomorrow? Bester? No. The Lord is good, but we'll do better things tomorrow. And it will go beyond the best to perfection. He said, the Lord will perfect all things that concerns you. That will be your portion. That will be your portion. I had this landmark blessing proclaimed on me. The prophet said, fresh oil, Lord, fresh oil, and keep him ever fresh. 1987, I've not known any spiritual dry season. Today, I declare an end to spiritual dry season in your life. I decree an end to every form of spiritual dry season in your life. I had this strange word from one of them. From today, he said, my sword is your sword. And my breastplate is your breastplate. What? I never heard that. I never heard it anywhere then. It came out of insight. And can I tell you what? Nothing provokes such blessings like the honor of your heart towards those channels. Honor from within. Not honor from the tip of the tongue. Honor from within. Everything they said to me, many of them I didn't have to write it for days. They were engraved in my heart. I'm saying to you tonight that whatever pertains to you in redemption, you don't have to struggle for it anymore. Yeah. One of them said to me, Because this man fears God, he laid his hand on me. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. His generation shall be blessed. What I shall be in his house. And his righteousness endures forever. Now, now 
that's from scriptures but it came prophetically so strong I'm saying to you tonight none of your children will be a concern if anyone is a concern right now wherever they may be I decree they are returned back to order if anyone is challenging his health because when children are sick the parents are more sick I decree divine healing for such individuals above all and I want to say this that's what the Bible calls a sworn blessing a sworn blessing he said to Abraham because you have done this thing you have not withheld your son your only son from me by myself have I sworn that in blessing I will bless you there is what you do that provokes a sworn blessing. May you succeed to hit sore things in your life. May you succeed to hit the point of sworn blessing in your life. It's a point of no reversal. May you hit the point of a sworn blessing in your life. I had that privilege years back. The Lord said to me, after I instructed him and I did what he said I should do, he said, my son David, even if you don't want to be rich, it's too late. Come and say, it's one blessing. When you meet a man or a woman carrying his one blessing, stay clear. Stay clear. Stay clear. Stay clear. If I will bless them that bless thee, and him that causes you, I will cause. Stay clear. And you are blessed of the Lord, as he said of Abraham. So, endeavor to hit the point of a sworn blessing. Ah. No skill on earth can match it. No skill on earth can match it. Therefore, I believe tonight that each one before the year is over, you will hit the point of a sworn blessing. His blessings make rich and they add no sorrow. His blessings make rich and they add no sorrow. Now, what should I expect tonight? I'm going to pray for my beloved son in the Lord and his wife. But what of you? He has not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. You have come in honor of Jesus and in honor of his servant. You must return with your package. You must return with your package tonight. God never gathers his people in vain. He gathers us to bless us. As we all know, God has bestowed specific blessings on every spiritual house, every church of Christ. And by the grace of God, we have seen God wipe away tears from off all our faces in this house as entrenched in the liberation mandate. Therefore, expect every of your secret tears to be wiped off tonight. Every form of weeping behind closed doors is over tonight. Your weeping has started for a night. Joy is coming in the morning. And I mean, within seven days of this day, God will wipe away every tear on your hand. He said, Weep not for the lion of the tribe of Judah has prevailed to open the book. The book is open tonight. There are prophetic blessings that when re received, believed, God steps into confirm. Expect every tear behind closed doors 
to be wiped off tonight. This is a house of healing, health, and wholeness. Also as entrenched in the mandate. Therefore, if anyone came into this service with any sickness or disease, expect to return home healed and made whole. This is a house of supernatural prosperity. One core identity of this commission worldwide is supernatural blessing. Which is a mandate received from the Lord when the Lord said to me, get back home and make my people rich. Therefore, expect the siege of poverty to be broken over your life and family as you engage with the terms of the covenant of abundance the scriptures cannot be broken as you engage with the covenant terms of abundance this church is a home of signs and wonders in confirmation of the mandate to usher in the era of pace setting signs and wonders. Pace setting signs and wonders. I was checking through today. We have seen 35 people that Jesus raised from the dead through members of the church. We have always had those testimonies of great anointed men moving into that realm. But now we see women raising their husband back to life. We see mothers raising their children back to life. God said to me, usher in this new era with me. I said, what a right era of science and wonders of higher dimension. During COVID-19, we have said 115 testimonies from across all continents of the earth, people that Jesus set free from the plague. Because he said the hour has come to liberate the world from all opponents of the devil through the preaching of the word of faith and send you to them that take this task. Therefore, tonight, every issue of your life that requires the hand of God for a turn around, <laughs> receive it now. That terminal disease is terminated. Yeah. That siege on your business that seems to be generational is broken tonight. Yeah. That band in your career, you can't find a way forward, you just get stalled, stagnated. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, in this house of liberation, I decree your liberation. Yeah. Therefore, expect all challenges of your life to be turned to testimonies yeah. in this service tonight. Yeah. In conclusion, when Saul came among the prophets, he began to prophesy. Therefore, expect every blessing in this spiritual house to begin to speak louder by the day in your life from this service in the name of Jesus. Welcome to your mountain of change. Welcome to your mountain of transformation. You remember this validity service for many years to come. Because something is turning already in your life. 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 And as Saul re returned, he was given another heart and turned into another man. As we return from this service, you'll be giving another heart. 
and you be turned to another man. In the name of Jesus. And now I've spoken of blessings, and it's time to proclaim blessings. Mr. Lebron tonight, and in the name of Jesus, the blessing proclaimed will be stamped on your life and for life. Now, listen, you didn't come my way, God sent you my way. And God sent me to you. I knew that in my heart. And I'm proclaiming to you tonight, upon you tonight, the blessings of a father that caused men to prevail. And you shall keep prevailing. Yeah. You'll never know a setback in your life. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. I also have my co laborers who are part of the foundations of this ministry. Bishop Joe Ebuema is here. Stand for recognition, please. Bishop Dixon Lorenda is here. Bishop Bulu Martins is here. God bless you all. Please come. Please give our celebrant and his spouse a big hand. Amen. Now, are you happy to see this newlywed? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. The best is on the way coming. Join me, stretch forth your hands, everyone. Stand to your feet. And let your mouth be open to proclaim blessings. What do you want to see in your own life? Proclaim it right now. In Jesus' precious name. Every book is in chapters. After one chapter, then opens the next chapter, and then the next chapter, and then the next chapter. In the name of Jesus, no door shall be shut against you. Every seed sown has a future. Therefore, your seed of labor, your seed of time, energy, and resources shall come to be rewarded. As I lay hands on you, your strength will not diminish. Your faith will not go down. Your spiritual life will remain on fire. In the name of Jesus, I declare upon you and your entire household a new dawn. In the name of Jesus, now you are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. No evil touches you, no pestilence comes near your dwelling. As your day, so shall your strength be. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the fire, the, the fire on the altar of your heart will never go out. Yeah. You keep casting wood into it every morning. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. The blessing of the Father that caused men to prevail is upon you tonight. Yeah. You're going to prevail where others travel. Yeah. In the precious name of Jesus. Yeah. So shall it be. Yeah. Be blessed of the Lord. Be blessed of the Lord. Be blessed of the Lord. And be blessed of the Lord. In Jesus' name. Congratulations. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
The job of priests is to proclaim blessings, and God goes there to confirm it. Therefore, may every blessing proclaimed on you tonight receive confirmation from above. In the name of Jesus. 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 As the Lord lives, you will testify. The jobless will be jumping with their miracle jobs. Every dime business will resuscitate again. No one returns home with any sickness or disease. You wake up tomorrow morning into a brand new day. And so shall it be. Lift up those two hands, everybody, and give God thanks. Give Him praise. Give him glory. For all our leaders from the various churches, God bless you for coming. And all our officials who have traveled in from various places, all the sons of the prophets and daughters of the prophet who are here, be blessed. And may the blessings upon your father keep flowing in your life in multiplied form. Lift up your two hands and give God thanks. Give him thanks for the blessing you have received tonight. Praise God, fortune is my portion 2024. Shall we take our seat in the name of Jesus Christ? Please let's take note of the following announcement before we go. Number one, we are all admonished to use the exit gates, the three exit gates on our way out to ease traffic on our way out of Goshen. Number two, there are available takeaway packages to be given to everyone as we exit our way out of the auditorium. Number three, good news. Next Sunday shall be our covenant day of open doors. And also our Operation Andrew Sunday. It shall also be our special anointing service. Time is 6.30 a.m., 8.30 a.m., and 10.30 a.m. Come along with at least two souls, and your life will never be the same. Hallelujah. Shall we together share the goodness and uh, rise up on our feet and share the goodness together in fellowship? Praise God. Fortune is my portion in 2024. Congratulations. Help me greet somebody on your way out. God bless you. Choir, please, let's have some songs. Let's praise God. Let's have some songs as we celebrate before we go. Choir, please. What's the one thing holding you back from living the life God has called you to? I bet it's fear. Fear that whispers, you're not enough, you can't do it, you'll fail. But what if I told you, God never intended for you to live in fear? In fact, he has given you everything you need to overcome it. Today, we're going to talk about how to break free from the chains of fear and walk in the boldness that God has already placed inside of you. And it all starts with one thing, faith. Let's dive in. Fear is something we all face. It can be paralyzing, overwhelming, and even make us doubt God's promises. But here's what we need to understand. Fear is not from God. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, 
For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let that sink in for a moment. Fear is not your identity. Power, love, and a sound mind are. Fear doesn't get the final say in your life. God's power does. I know some of you are watching this right now feeling like fear has gripped every area of your life. Fear of failure, fear of rejection, fear of the unknown. But here's the good news. Jesus is greater than your fear. When you feel anxious or afraid, you're not meant to carry that weight alone. In fact, Jesus invites us in. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Fear can weigh you down. It can make you feel like you're carrying a burden too heavy to bear. But God is saying, come to me. Give that fear to me and I'll give you peace. When you put your trust in God, you start to realize that he's bigger than your fears. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 reminds us, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God is literally promising that you don't have to do it alone. He's holding you up even when the fear feels overwhelming. What if, instead of focusing on your fears, you started focusing on God's promises? Practical Steps to Overcome Fear So, how do we practically overcome fear in our daily lives? Here are three key steps. Number one, meditate on God's Word. The Bible is full of promises that combat fear. One of my favorites is Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Read scriptures like this daily, remind yourself of God's truth, and fear will lose its grip on your heart. Number two, pray boldly. Prayer is not just asking God for things, it's an exchange. When you come to God in prayer, give him your fear and receive his peace. Philippians chapter 4 verses 6 to 7 tells us, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Number three, take action in faith. Fear tries to freeze you in place, but faith moves you forward. Whatever God is calling you to do, do it despite the fear. That's where real courage comes from. Not the absence of fear, but moving forward, through it with the strength of God by your side. In conclusion, listen, I don't know what fears you're facing right now, but I do know this. God has already given you the power to overcome them. You don't have to live in fear anymore. You can live boldly, confidently, and courageously because God is with you. Remember Romans chapter 8, verse 31. If God is for us, who can be against us? So, don't let fear have the final word in your life. Instead, let faith rise up. Let God's promises lead the way. If this message has touched you, don't keep it to yourself. Share it with someone who needs to hear it. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content that will strengthen your walk with Christ. Let's break free from fear together.